Hello and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. You're welcome to another interesting, impactful, value-adding, educating, and insightful episode of Standout by Patrick Udoma. In Standout, we redefine standard. This is a new time and age where everything has gone virtual. Of course, there are certain things that are beyond our control, such as the network operation. In a meeting I was having two days ago, just when I was about giving my presentation, the network started having issues. And who will you blame for that? Also, a week ago, when the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Muhammad Buhari, was about giving a speech in a forum, a United Nations forum, guess what happened? His network locked him out. But the thing is that it didn't happen to just him. It happened to a couple of world presidents. That is one of the challenges we'll be facing in these times. Of course, we all know that a lot of mayhem have been facing us in this time and age. The highly contagious coronavirus pandemic is not news anymore to anyone. We have locust infestation in East Africa, Rwanda, and the rest of the East African countries. We have the Lassa fever. We have unending protests in Hong Kong and the United States of America. And right now, the protest for proper policing and racism has gone global. But now, more than ever before, it's not a time to lose hope. Of course, in standard, in stand out, we redefine standard. It's not a time to lose hope. It's a time to become more courageous and redefine the standard for the moment. You're welcome once again to Standard by Mr. Patrick Uduma. In Standard, in Stand Out, we are three years old. We've been on this journey for three good, healthy years, impacting lives, adding value, and redefining stand standard. Of course, it's a one privilege to have the mentor, the teacher, our very own Mr. Patrick Uduma right here with us. And permit me to make welcome the mentor and teacher, Mr. Patrick Uduma. Also, I'm excited being with you here as always. Uh, thank you for always um, uh, making our time for us to be able to do this together. Uh, bringing your personality into standout. And as a standout personality, I'm, I'm excited, completely excited. And thank you for finding time in your busy schedule. I know how um, busy you could be, sought after personality, great guy. So thank you for being here. And to our audience and to every member of standout, thank you very much for standing in with, with, with me this morning. Um, I was excited, I was uh, moved to tears this morning when one of us um, um, after the radio program called me to say sir let me pray for you and the way he was praying he wasn't praying for me he was praying for us and tears start rolling into uh, from my eyes because he was not he, we, it's not about me now it's about us and we have come um, into a place where we have formed a formidable relationship a formidable personality so it's no longer an individual thing it's us because for three years we have seen benefit of increase redefining standard um creating value principles and we have ultimately like i said today i am the first beneficiary of standard because my life has literally um escalated beyond my imagination and i'm glad that we took that bold step you know to start what we're doing here so i thank everybody um thank thank god we are surviving the pandemic it is not it's not over yet it is just a process and that's why we have redefined the standard of the pandemic into our own usefulness because it will serve for a greater good and not for our against us it's not against us it's for us and so we we'll utilize it well to our own benefit thank you very much Thank you very much, Mr. Patrick. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Today marks three years of the existence of this our global organization, Stand Out. And of course, stand, standards have been redefined. Lives have been impacted. 
I'm a living witness. I fetch regularly every day from your, your wide, deep wealth of knowledge, and I can attest to that. How do you feel to, to have come this long and to have impacted on the lives of young people? Well, um, like I always say, in standout, um, I'm not meant to be here because usually when we started, I, di I didn't think I have what it takes. I didn't have the expertise. I didn't have the um, the morality. I didn't have the uh, the togetherness, the perfect thing that the world may want to hear. Um, but all that I had was a burning desire, you know, to see my generation live their full life to see men come back into great potential, to see that we're not victims of life, but we are victors of life, to see that we own and author our life, to rediscover our potential, to let people know you can come in from the mold into the marble, to think that no matter the background, there's something good about you, there's something good. We talk about so much about dwelling in goodness, and we can practically see that we're dwelling in goodness. So it's been such a great challenging moment. I have a time when men and women have questioned my integrity, has questioned uh, why, why I do what I'm doing and to have the local standing. But hey, in also three years, we are three years going, you know, and we're on radio, we've done several projects, we've visited several things, we have carried out a whole lot, but that's not the issue. But the point is, Mr. Patrick, are you still there? Apologies for that break in transmission, guys. Like I said earlier on, we will have to be patient with the process and you all have to bear with us through these trying times. Of course, it's what everybody has been experiencing and facing. Having meetings and conferences virtually like this. It's nobody's making, it's nobody's fault. Like right here in my office, I have three different networks all subscribed. And that's exactly what Mr. Patrick advised me to do. So when one begins to have a problem or give a hitch, we'll quickly swap to the other. While we wait for the mentor to log back on, I want to let you all understand who we are in Standout. We have a vision to become a universal instrument that influences and models value creation. I want you to understand the words, influences and models value creation and human development. Value creation and human development. We have a mission to educate, inspire, and expose the minds of young people to educate, inspire, and expose the minds of young people to vital truths through deliberate experiential teachings, knowledge sharing, and mentoring. I'll share a story of our mentor. Do you know that there was a a capacity building reality program organized by one of the mentees too, where different entrepreneurs were meant to showcase their showcase and exhibit their their skill, their craft, their business, their service. And one of one of the the exhibitors, of course, the, the screening process to get on that show was highly stringent. We had loads and tons of people over 5,000 people applied for it but the very best made it to the house the very best made it to the reality tv show and mr patrick uduma was the mentor and one of the facilitators of the program after everything one of the exhibitors told me that do i know who his best facilitator was i said my guest
And lo and behold, it was Mr. Patrick Uzuma. He went on to make us understand that he has a friendly and realistic approach to making us understand the things he wants us to understand. And that's very true. Mr. Patrick has, has experienced it. That's why in our, in our mission, we talk about experiential knowledge sharing and teaching. It's a different scenario when someone reads from the internet or studies from books and comes to teach you, as opposed to someone experiencing it firsthand through life. Mr. Patrick has gone through the corridors of the huddles of life, through the thick and things, and against the ills and odds, he has emerged a successful mentor. Thank you very much, Mr. Patrick. He's right back. Thank you very much. You're welcome back. Like, I'm clean. Thank you very much for holding on. And my apologies to the network and uh, the light, the power situation. If you vote me as the president, and I will change the light. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> I trust you on that. I was trying to make them understand that it's nobody's making. We'll keep experiencing and being patient with ourselves as we, as we deal with this network issues amidst virtual meetings like this. So moving on, Mr. Patrick, we know that the mm -hmm. word of the year has been rushing. And having that word at the back of my mind, I put it on a sticker note and it's on the door of my wardrobe. So whenever I wake up and I see the word rulership, it triggers me. It makes me understand that we have to rule, we have to lead. But first, we have to understand how to lead ourselves. We have to understand how to rule ourselves through the hurdles and challenges of life. Because in order to lead people, it will primarily, primarily be a, a reflection of who we are. It will be an extension of the values we have that we would give to people. So what prompted this word rulership? And when, when um, establishing this word rulership as the word of the year, did you, did you think it will have this level of impact in a life like it's having in me? What prompted this word? Thank you again. You know, I believe in the word of affirmation. I believe that um, strongly you should be able to, like you said, remind yourself you know, that's a creative world. So both in the subconscious level and the conscious level, as you speak those words, they begin to manifest in your space as well too. I believe in spoken word, trust me. Um, part of my journey so far was an affirmative word. I can remember um, at all when life was really what they call bad. Well, you know, I didn't, I didn't, have, I didn't have nothing. I thought I didn't have a house. But every morning, I had my affirmative word that I was speaking. You know, that is the beginning of believing yourself when you can speak the word. Because the good book say, as I speak, so I believe. As I believe, so I speak. So in, 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 in standard, we realize that we are leaders in all realms. And you cannot lead people until you're leading yourself. So we don't lead from behind or from uh from from somewhere we live in front so if we say big part of the uh, life account we are demonstrating life account if we're talking about discipline we are living in discipline so here uh the word of the year for us is to reemphasize the potential inside of us to be able to rule circumstances where we are not victims where we find strength in any circumstances to to lead the situation to lead the contrary move and, and lead ourselves out of every um, debilitating situation or unfriendly situation. So I, I strongly believe that it was divinely handed over to me, you know, so that as a people we have a world, a vision where we are, what is driving us every year. Thank you very much, Mr. Patrick. Highly insightfully explained. It's a privilege to always have you give us this your experiential teachings and knowledge sharing from your in-depth level of experience in life. Of course, over, the, over time, over the years, over the series of classes we've had, I've, I've been able to, to get this book full. This book in particular is a, is a book on the front page. I captioned it, stand out. And of course, today, we have the rare honor and privilege 
to be fetching from your wealth of knowledge again. And today we're talking about reflection. You've captioned your talk and your teaching, your experiential knowledge sharing for today, which is marked the third anniversary of our global organization, Stand Out. You've captioned it, reflection. Reflection makes me think vast and wide right now. Are we reflecting on the journey so far, coming from three years ago? Are we reflecting on, on the pandemic, this time and age? Are we reflecting on our life in general? What exactly are we reflecting on? What exactly does this title, does this theme and topic mean to us? Also, I want to go back a little bit to the word of the year so that I can take it up um, holistically because I don't want to miss that. It's very important. So this year was a year of rulership. We want to be able to rule ourselves. We want to be able to rule circumstances, not circumstances ruling us. And so we divided into four segments. And number one of it is power. You need power. We need power. We don't enforce. We energize it. There's a difference in by enforcing than empowering. So we trade places and experiences with a commitment to principle and standard in the formation of structure to outclass any situation with a controlling presence. So as members of standard, we come with a controlling presence. We don't take life, we give life. We don't take life. So we, when we go into a gloomy area, we come with our presence because we have standard, but we have structures to mitigate every situation. So we are powerful people, uh, irrespective of whatever it is. We, we, we got wealth, uh, wealth because we have been graced to build possibility. Our wealth is in the fact that we are graced to build possibility through focus, value, optimization, and organized detail plan to invent solution. So everywhere we go, we are not judgmental, we are open to solution. So that's why we have the wealth of knowledge because we're detailed, we are graced. The next one is that we have wisdom. Uh, we are so we are fearless in receiving instructions and on very much rich with intent of application, administration, and management of resources to make a difference. Of course, that's why we're standard. So anywhere we go, we make a difference because we have the wisdom of application, wisdom of doing, wisdom of applying the knowledge that we have. And lastly, we have what we call strength. This strength is in our uncompromising robustness of mind to continuously function in great character. Character is our strength. We try to, because of our value optimization, we bring in character. You know, we bring in character, we bring mental soundness, and we bring moral attitude to effectively deploy our skill anywhere we are. So this is what, how we are divided it. Number one is power we got power number two we got wealth number three we got wisdom and number four we have strength i just wanted to zero in the word of the year so that we don't lose that because it's very important so each time you are in your down moment go back to the word of the year we got the wisdom because you are great you are fearless you are bold you know we're growing bolder because we have strength why because we have uncom uncompromising mind we have a sound mind at any point in time we don't allow anger to pollute us we don't allow infilling to pollute us we don't allow complaint to pollute us we are sound in what we do to demonstrate where we're going to make a difference so now thank coming you. back to reflection thank you reflection is it's such something that every day i walk to be better who I am. I want to be better. The, the, there's, a, there's a word from this from the scripture, the Holy uh, Bible, that say that the day of a righteous man shine brighter and brighter. And reflection for me, it's such an interesting thing because I was walking out a particular day and I met a lady who was, um, who was apparently sweeping uh, the, the streets as she was sweeping the street, you know, I, I noticed that she was bending much more than she ought to bend. And the compassion, not judging her, it led me to go and ask her, why are you not using the longer broom uh, to do what your job required to do? And at, at that moment, the, at that particular moment, uh, that was the compassion I had. So, 
She told me the, that's what the company provided. And I said, okay, don't worry. I'll try to see if I can get you a longer thing so that you can do your work effectively. And, 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 and I keep wondering why, what was my business? Because any other person could have passed and said, what's your business? It's not your business. Why are you asking? But she was cleaning the street and, and making the place. Clean. So it's our collective effort to work together. So I started reflecting, um, how do I see myself in others? How do, how do people see me? How do I want to be seen by others? Like th this morning, I started talking, what if you're a product? Can you buy yourself? What if you're you are an investment? Can you invest in yourself? What if you're a father? Can you, be, can you be a great father that you enjoy? Are you comfortable with yourself? Are you proud of yourself? Can you celebrate yourself? Can you give yourself an upload? And this has given me opportunity to be able to, you know, to review this. And I come up with this uh, reflection. And so reflection for me is a holistic approach or the beginning of your personal growth. Because I don't want to remain ten. I want to make sure that I'm better each day. I want to make sure that I speak better. I want to make sure that who I am is not falsely displayed. I am carrying my originality. I am carrying my ingenuity. I'm able to appreciate myself. I'm not going to be able to fade away. Of course, it was reflected how men alter their originality because of certain reward they want to get. And I read in the Holy, Holy Book, it said, if a good man, a good man, fidget in front of a wicked, wicked man, it, it means that his fountain is rotten. Mm. So each time you are fidgeting or you want to alter your originality, go and check your source. There's something wrong. And so that's Thank why you. I came up with what I call reflection. Thank you and what is reflection? What is the definition of reflection is that an amount of light, heat, or sound that is reflected by a body on a surface. How do I reflect when I come into governance? How do I reflect in place of leadership? How do I reflect as a husband? How do I reflect as a wife? How do I reflect as an employee or employer? How do I reflect as a citizen of a country, of Nigeria? How do I reflect to my parents? How do I come across to my friends? How do I cross across to my enemies? So you should be able to be able to come to that point in your life that you are not going to fiddle away because of circumstances or events or people, but you will maintain your originality so that you can reflect on people. Our human what is not is in the mind and in, in the heart. Our ability to keep stand out with wrong attitude as what given to others life in return. We must understand that our life is not an accident and it's neither a coincidence, it's a shadow and a reflection of our thinking, action, and feelings. Rather, the, the truth about life is that life is a reflection of your action. What you give to others, you will receive the same in return. Mm. What you give to others, you will receive the same in return. Also, I realize that most times we judge people based on who we are. If we can't trust ourselves, we can't trust others. If we can't believe in ourselves, we can't believe in others. That's why people pretend and pretense devalue you. Pretense takes you out of your originality. People can say, fake it until you become it. When you talk about faking it, you have to be intentional about consequence. It's not just about faking it. So you need to be sure that you are not pretending. Even when you are pretending, that pretense must be intentional not to distort your originality. Mm. So you have to pretend in your originality. Let's say, for instance, I'm, I'm, I'm not calm and I see a calm person like you. I must bring that reflection of myself into what I'm admiring. 
So I saw the wicked. I saw this thing. I saw the wicked bloated like a toad, croaking pretentious nonsense. The next time I look, they were nothing but a punctured bladder and a vipered limb. So that means if I reflect, let's say, for instance, I got to you and I told you that I am the governor's brother. Mm. I am not the governor's brother. But each time I come to you, I tell you I'm, I know the governor. The governor is my friend. In fact, I can call the governor now. Now, I do not even have any relationship with the governor. I'm pretending. What if you went to look out and search me and re realize that I'm not the governor's brother or relation or anything? I don't even know the governor. Mm. You see, that's a punctured bladder. You right. will never trust that person. It's out of character. You reflected what you are not, and now you are dis you are deceived, and now men will see you as a deceit. So that leads me to the concept. I broke it down into four concepts. So I have four okay, concepts. Sorry, will be sorry, sorry, Mr. Patrick. Sorry, Mr. Patrick, to yes. cut you. Before we go into the concept, is 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 reflection the same thing as reality check? Oh the, yes, the, yes, the, yes, for the exactly. reality and clarification of um, that doubt in the minds of our audience. Yes, it's, re it's reality check. It's called the okay. test. It's, it's, it's the quality test. You know that as a product, before a product is handed over, it goes into a process. Mm. It goes into a process. That's why you see, your, where you are is a process. So it is not the end that, that matters. It's the process that exactly. guarantees the end. Exactly. So it's a exactly. process. So it's a it's a reality check. You 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 you've been into reality uh, uh, show, and you find out that you were involved. It was a test of character. It was a test of personality. It was a test of intelligence. It was a test of originality, and not cloned. You may clone it to see that somebody has won, but now your reality is tested in the field. Your reflection. Will prove you very whether true. you are very good. I can yeah. I can relate with that because you, you can relate with be, that. You have to be very real with yourself, and that goes to buttress the point you made earlier on. You have to embrace yourself, accept yourself, haven't discovered yourself. You own yourself. You're not easily wavered or shaking, irrespective of the situation. You stand your ground. If you're someone that cries easily, that's who you are. If you're someone mm. that laughs into me, that's so you embrace whoever you are. Mm. I understand. And it's very powerful. It's empowering when you become yourself. Because yeah. now you are in your element. You are in yeah. your senses. You are in your potential. You yeah. are in your courage. Exactly. Okay? So now, if, if you are not yourself and you have been cloning, you are running with another person's strength and idea because it was not uttered by you. When the when the point of your test comes in, you will not survive it. That's why you see people Very crash down. Because Very see, like you, they like can't you go back when into we're their in. personality and become resilient and reproduce themselves because they are operating on another person's energy. Exactly. That's why, for instance, just like, you like you day, just like you said the other day, you cannot lead until you are real with yourself. You have to be real with yourself. You have to be comfortable with yourself. If you're not comfortable with yourself, you're running on another person's energy. Very true. Very true. Thank you very much. So earlier on, you talked about the image concept. The image concept as a concept of, of reflection. What exactly do you mean by the image concept? Well, I like to talk about people. Say, Have you ever seen back to see... Um, to... Ask yourself some basic questions, right? Um, have you ever sit back to say, have a meeting with yourself? Mm. Have you ever had a meeting with yourself? People don't know that you can have a meeting, summon yourself in a meeting with yourself. And image the source of you. How, who, who are you representing? Mm. Are you representing yourself in that meeting, or are you representing somebody? For me, your image is very important because how often you enjoy being you. 
Because wrong identity of you is the engine of frustration and unfulfilled life. Each time you're having an unfulfilled life, go back to the image that you're portraying. Confused life is rooted in identity crisis. We will try to define, define the true you, the one that is in the room without another person. When you are in the room, when you are enclosed, mm. only you, not what you are projecting to the world. Exactly. The way you see yourself and the world around you will reflect your overall experience. So sometimes you need to be able to stay in the room and have a meeting with yourself and get your true picture, internalize it and define it. Because no one can force you to be other than what you want to be unless you're constant to it. So one way to start becoming you is to train your mind to identify you in the midst of people and remain you. And one of that ways is if you have a facial, a physical deformation that you do not like, until you embrace it and become comfortable or with yourself. If you still keep wishing that that deformation goes, or that you're taller, or that you're smaller, or that you're darker, or that you're fatter, or that you're slimmer, you have not become yourself. You are creating an image, carrying an image, and that's what brings excess overload. Anxiety comes in. Depression comes in. Frustration comes in. Complexity, inferiority. Complexities come in. Because yeah. you see, you want to carry an image talking about your originality that you, you are not mental. If you have some physical disability or the physicality that you don't like, you need to calm down. We will try to unaid the principal object of you. The most profitable venture called you. You are the most profitable venture. I am the most profitable venture. No matter what happens, I am an investment of myself. I am the most important. So the, this idea is rooted in four foundation. To found yourself, I want to help people. Number one is to be just. Justice means to be fair. Don't act outside sorry, justice. Sorry, sorry to cut you there. Quick one. Yes. You know, you 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 taught me these, these words of affirmation and and confidence in ourselves. And someone told me one day, Canon, you you have a complexity, superiority complexity. So right now, I want to ask, as opposed to having inferiority complexity, how do you create the balance? Is it bad to have superiority complexity, or how do you find the balance in between both of them? That is where we talk about justice. Your presence and your confidence must be valuable to the next one. Anytime you are high in yourself that you feel that you are better than others, you are out of balance. Anytime you feel that your, 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 your feeling of your superiority, it is making another person smaller, then you miss it completely because you know it in your energy expression. If I come in here and I feel like I'm better than you, I own more money. I'm comparing with you. And there's no basis for comparison. Because what you're doing, you cannot judge me by my harvest. Judge me by my input. Because sometimes what I'm doing, maybe for instance, I like the way you look. You have always maintained this. Maybe you walk out. And by 6 o'clock, you're walking out. And I'm sleeping. I'm glued with uh, my device. Or you you are working out. So how can you feel better than I? Because what I'm doing, you're not doing. What I'm eating, you're not eating. My thought processes are not your thought processes. So where is the basis of superiority? I can feel confident because of the way I talk. It's because I believe in me. I'm not going to use it as an intimidation. I'm going to use it to prove to you or to put to you that you can become everything that you want to become. That's why I don't live a story life. So your superiority is not about people. Your superiority is ability to connect with people. Mm. Because every complex 
that disconnecting with people is not the right com complex. Mm. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So you were about talking about justice. Yeah, so I have the full foundation upon which your life will, should, should take a form. Nobody okay. teaches us some of these things, and they are very vital because we are in a universal world that are governed by laws. And so these are universal law. You remember I talked about the laws, the universal yeah. law. And, yeah. and I said that who sustain life? Every time you get into an involvement, the first thing you need to understand are the rules. So there are universal rules, and those universal rules are classified in the four. Number one is justice, fairness, and equity. What do you bring? What you bring is what you are going to reflect. The second one is right, right thinking, morality, and character. Right thinking, morality, and character. I know my generation may not want to think about this, but those are the foundation of your personality. How moral are you? Number three, sincerity. You cannot live an authentic life and be you when you are alive. That's the truth of life. And the next one is kindness. Let me tell you, the root of life is in kindness. Kindness, when you are kind to yourself and kind to the world, that is the beginning. That is the beginning of great connection. So, how do you enjoy being you? Do you validate yourself? Do you approve yourself and admire yourself in your thinking pattern, in your behavioral manner, in your feelings, and in your belief system? Do you refuse yourself? Do you reject yourself? Do you resent yourself? There are people who they see themselves, they resent themselves. Very or true. are you embracing to yourself? Do you like yourself? We need to ask yourself, would you say that you are comfortable being who you are? Mm. That's why I say, if you're a product, can you buy or invest in yourself? So uh, there are critical questions to discover or to stay to live your life. So the source of identity, like I said, is to keep it is, is, is rooted in your image of you. And there are three things that from today, every one of us should avoid. Never disbelieve yourself. Never disbelieve yourself. Disbelieving yourself, meaning there are no possibility in your life. Never, no matter the circumstances, no matter where you are, don't be disbelieving yourself. If I disbelieve in myself, I will come this far. And hey, three years has passed. There's been a tremendous land-proof remarkable landmarks in my life exactly very 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 unconventional why well, because i do believe in myself number two don't doubt yourself in no circumstances must you doubt once you have a doubt once you start doubting yourself you are in trouble why because you are in you are big your decisions are faulty because you don't even believe in yourself and you doubt your capability, you doubt the potential inside of you. Number three, avoid the fear of you. People are afraid of themselves. And I say that when you are afraid, it means that you believe more in failure or you believe more in evil. But once you believe in yourself, you believe in your capability, that means that you cannot be afraid of yourself. So fear is faith. An energy connected to whatever you believe. So when I say I'm in fear, that means I lack faith in goodness. I lack faith in my God. I lack faith in possibility. But when I have more faith in goodness, you realize that I cannot doubt myself and I cannot be afraid. Once I discover this secret, I'm not afraid of anything. Everything have time. If I if I'm if I do not have one naira now, I'm not scared because if I've made one naira, I can make it. That's why you have said that's a believing in you is the beginning of your purpose, your attainment, and your imagining. Believe in your dream, cultivate the trust in you. Always look within you the satisfaction, the approval, and the comfort, and then live out that principal thing. 
And what's my own principal thing? I'm a builder. So my vision is I'm a builder. So I build myself, I build people, I build organization, I build the city, I build a nation, I build an economy. So that is who I am. And I'm not afraid. Why? Because you see, I have identified myself and I'm comfortable to be a builder. And I'll simplify it. I have quality, I have product, productivity, and I have perfection. What is perfection? Continuous improvement. So you become comfortable with yourself. That will lead me to the second concept. Should I go on? Yes, go on. I'm so I move on zero to really the second concept. Example. So the second subject is what I call the dark concept. The dark concept. We are always afraid of, of zero. We are always afraid of darkness. Without darkness, your life cannot mold well. You need a bit of darkness to be able to form you. I didn't say the good book said, he served me a six court dinner right in the front of my enemies and revived my brain with blessing. Have you noticed darkness is where you recite? In dark, at night is where you recite. The dark light is essential part of the process to the future. And you cannot avoid the dark part. Experiencing a full range of the different emotion, emotions is part of human, human, who are being human. What obstacles? Obstacles are held for an opportunity to reveal, build, and strengthen you in the course of your life or living your principal life. What is key here is it's not a disappearance of obstacles or the negativity, but the, your conscious will to move towards your desired focus. Your conscious will. So whether you like it or don't like it, guys, darkness is part of the process. Hmm. Without the darkness, you cannot fully come. Let's stop being afraid when, when obstacles want to emerge. Embrace obstacles. Because your perspective of obstacle, which is referred as the dark concept, makes the difference. Your view of obstacle as a puzzle to be solved or opportunity to expand, grow, and advance or view it as a threat will determine how you reflect on the obstacles and your night time. Hmm. If you look at obstacle as a point of breaking down and reformating yourself, that is when you embrace obstacles and you utilize obstacles as a stepping stone. Listen, each time I lose a business, like it is not a time to whine, it's not a time to complain on a portion plan. It's a point to say, what is it that I did do well? You check the profile of the people who got the job. You look at them, you say, no, I can do that. This I, night, I, the I opportunity relate, to redress, I relate, to reflect. I can relate, I can relate you, with what you can relate. Right yes. yes. Do you know when I went for the Golden yeah. Ultimate Search? A lot of people don't know that I went the first time. Mm. I went very close to getting it, and I didn't make it into the jungle. I went the second time. I went very close to getting into mm. the jungle, but still I didn't make it. And this third year, a different year, third year, while I was jogging in preparation mm. to keep fit, I broke my ankle. Do you know, ordinarily, someone would wow. say, oh, God doesn't want you to get this. But I believed in my mind that when it gets tougher... That is, that is, that is, that is it. Yes, I believe that when the situation mm -hmm. gets tougher, it means that I'm supposed to be there and something is trying to hold me back. So I should get tougher too. Like the saying goes, when the situation gets tough, the tough gets going. It was that particular year that I broke my ankle. This is the was, point. This is the mentality. Yes. Which that, that point is when I should say, oh, no. That's the mentality. Me. Somebody will say, oh, it's a sign. God is giving Because they saw a light. No. You know, no. They saw a lie. Because yes. you see, Tougher. That and if you, if you watch, that was the beginning of, of believing in yourself. Yes, that made me believe that when the situation, when the situation gets tougher, 
we have to get excited and motivated because if either you've gotten to the darkest point of the night or you've gotten closer to the darkest point of, of the night, and the darkest point of the night is the exact point that leads to the break of dawn. And that's where people give up. Yes. You have stayed for a job and you are about to pass you to as a manager. And one of your colleagues went to gossip you. And you say, God is telling me to go out. No. God is not telling you. It will start fast. Listen, anytime you quit when you, have, when you are in error, you quit as a defeated person. Yes. I tell you, there was a time in my job, it was obvious that there was a gang around me. They mm. told me to resign. I said, I'm not going to resign. They did everything. They said, no, I'm not going to resign. I remember my sister called me, said by prophetic word, move out. I said, hey, my sister, if I leave this office uncelebrated, then I will lose all my life. And I stayed there until the worst happened. And the worst happened and broke me completely. I'm emerging stronger. I emerge stronger. So and it, it is it not always you, is it an indication. It didn't break you completely, but it broke you. No. Open. No, yes. I went, I, I, went, I went to detention. I went to detention. It got to the, like it got, it was so, it was worse. I went to detention. I see. I it see was after the detention. I, I can't believe me myself. Like, I see those situations like breaking an egg or breaking a coconut. It broke, but it broke into yes. something beautiful. It broke open. Beautiful. That will help me to move on, on to the other, uh, to the breakdown. But listen, if you don't take anything, you need darkness. You need obstacles. They don't break you, they make you. Exactly. Obstacle make you. It, it tests your belief. It tests that you are not fearless. You're, you're fearless. That brings me to the, the, what they call the enemy concept. Enemy concept. When we tackle enemy, we find hidden results of courage and resilience. We do not know we have. It is only when we are faced with failure that you realize the inner resources at your disposal. Mm. It, it, in finding them, we we'll recover what is lost, like David. It was when he encouraged himself in the Lord that he was able to re recover and recollect every good intention, every good word, every good inspiration, Every good revelation, every good prophecy must go through the enemy testing time. Process. Each time you have a good word, be prepared for the enemy. That's why prophecy must go through the death process in order to emerge. Don't be so, too so excited when you get a promise. That promise must be challenged. So who exactly is the enemy or what exactly is the enemy? Enemies could be failure. Enemy could be your manager being against you in the office. He is not against you or she's not against you. She is propelling him, tearing you up. He's testing you. Have you noticed each time you pray very well, the next time you are going to encounter difficulty that day? And that's why people confess negatively and they say, oh, the worst has happened. Each time you pray very well that the heaven has heard you, there's going to be a king of pressure who would want to withhold you. This principle has always been expect a, a grain of corn fell to the ground and dies. It abides alone. And apparently when it dies, it brings forth much fruit. The seed is buried, but sprout and reproduce itself many times over. But if the seed doesn't go through this process, it remains only a seed that will be eaten or trashed someday. In the same way, anyone who holds on to life destroys that life. But if you let it die recklessly in love, you will have it forever. Without crucifixion, there will be no glorification. Mm. We focus and speak of glory in the face of sacrifice. My generation don't want to make sacrifice. 
the enemy of shame, the enemy of failure, the enemy of delayed dream, frustration, lack, homelessness, under under development, unattainable goals, hopelessness, joblessness, marital dissatisfaction, and marital delays. These are one of the things that brings out who you are. Your standing out will come to you through shame. Don't be afraid to shame. Be, be I've, been, I've, been, I've been shamed in several times. I don't look at them as as my enemy, I look at them as my redefining moment. Maybe I'm not in the right habit. Maybe I'm not in the right connection. Maybe I'm not in the right frame of mental capacity. Mm. The enemy is the cross you carry. Something must die in you to give birth of you. Mm. Something must always die to give a new birth. So when you are going through that enemy challenge, it is cracking down the old you in order to build a new you. Mm -hmm. Some people say, must we go this, through pro this process? We must go through this process. It's a natural process. Mm -hmm. You except, must constantly except, die to self if you must leave. Except they don't want to cross the bridge. Unless you don't want to cross the bridge. You must surrender to everything to keep it. You must lose self in order to find self. I want to say that again. You must always lose self in order to find self. If we must make impact, then we must die within us. That's why Paul say, I die daily. Because death proceeds growth. If it is not, if it doesn't proceed from the heart, it will not go to the heart. Therefore, we must be eager to be buried, hidden, dying, yet be more fruitful. Every circumstances of life require that we die to the old belief. That leads me to the final one, concept. The concept of self-commitment. This is the beginning of being you. You need to commit to be you. That is agreement to be yourself. Wake up every day and say, hey, Patrick, you're going to be Patrick. Whether in church, you're going to be Patrick. Whether in school, you're going to be Patrick. Whether in the aeroplane, you're going to be Patrick. Whether you're in London, you're going to be Patrick. Whether in Amukawafa, you're going to be Patrick. Everywhere you are, you have to agree. Every day, off front. That's commitment. Live your life full. Develop your life and impact and entrust your life. The principal thing is that life is a reflection of your commitment to self. Life Life principle must be a commitment to yourself. Do not live in confusion. Do not live without care of yourself and discretion. Always sort things out. Divide and distinguish between the pressures and the veil. Set matters in rank and order. And remember always, morning by morning, to commit to the discovered true self, like I'm a builder. Commit to your principal life each day. Commit to your principal objective in giving a physical place. Give the choices field to that which is important in your life. Commit to be the best of you. Commit to be a noble example of yourself. Act like you never shirk in, in front of anyone because you are, your fountain is the Lord. Commit with the purest of intention and right motive. Commit to responsibility to making a difference in your life. Constantly water and refresh your commitment to your true life. Habitualize with accountability to yourself with uninterrupted focus and determination. Make public declaration of your commitment by writing, speaking, and feeling and acting. Find encouragement to stay committed to your belief and values and goals and the principles. May your heart be fully committed to the Lord our God, to live by his decrees and obey his commandment. Your commitment communicates and entrust principle. Commitment requires engaged heart and a mind with responsibility to continually practice, commit to the end and reflect your life in all. I'm done. Can you hear me? 
So make a conscious commitment to yourself. Be you. The moment I start being myself, a lot of things, a lot of challenges, a lot of habits start dropping. You begin to own your processes. You begin to own your life. I'm committed to being who I am. I'm committed to be a builder. I'm committed to help people. I'm committed to build a strong relationship. I'm committed to have a, a, a connection. Above all, I want to be who God has made me to be. Thank you very much. That's Mr. my thought, and I hope. Great mentor. And above all, I want to stand out and redefine standard. Thank you very much. This, I have two, yeah. two quick questions Thank for you. you. But to all our listeners and our viewers yes. out there, we'll, we'll be taking the first two questions, fastest fingers. I'm sure if you've been listening, there'll be certain things you've not been clear about, certain things you need the mentor to dilute and digest for you a little bit. Kindly, quickly put that down in the comment section and we'll take the first two questions. So why do you do that? Mr. Patrick Uduma, you talked about committing to being yes, yourself. Wherever you find yourself, east, yes. west, north, and south, standing by your commitment. But there's a saying that, that goes, behave like the Romans when you are in the room and, and, and give unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Give unto God what belongs to God. Give unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar and behave like the Romans when you are in the room. So in a situation where you've committed to do a certain thing a certain way and then you realize that, oh, you're in a space where Caesar is now king and... And these people don't believe that God is king. But Caesar is now king right here. And you've committed to, to being with God and not with Caesar. But in this space, Jesus has said, give unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar. How exactly do you bend? At what point, at what, at what was the extent of flexibility you can go with that level of commitment? Also, I'm going to give you a simple question, uh, a story. So sometimes I was in um, Cote d'Ivoire. Is it Cote d'Ivoire now? Ivory Coast, either one of those. And um, my host was a high-ranking officer in that country. You know, he was um, an advisor to the president. Mm. And when we got there, so they belonged to a club. A noble club and those noble club the only drink that it, they take whether alcohol or wine is something above 10 years mm. right mm. so and after the day's meeting we have gone to the presidency and we have finished our meeting so they they wanted us to visit at home so the wife has made milk and all that and i said okay well uh, and so um i'm talking about giving to Caesar. so they brought in wine so I just wanted to test the wine. And my body could not carry the over 15 years wine. So why I was trying to lose who I am, you see, trying to preserve me in them, I was losing my body. Just a sip of the wine reminded me I'm not supposed to be there. So what do you do? So at that point, there is nothing wrong if I told them, my system cannot carry this. I respect what you do. Can you kindly give me water? You'll be respected for being yourself than trying to build them. I will also say this. I know that we are in a country where uh, people will say, if you are not corrupt, you can't be very rich. I believe I, I'm here to differ. If you bring good value and system structures, they will look for you. Because the gift of a man make it room. That is why when you begin to apply principles like contentment and godliness, you will rise above compromising your standard. That's why one of the things we we'll cherish more is strength of character and strength of morality. So do, I have been to several countries where I can't forget when we were, uh, was it in Brazil or some sort of thing, and they were doing the class of of, of top Atlantis great men that are in that place. And there is no title, there is no other that they were choices of wine. Of course, we're also start drinking or some sort of thing. But I know that I don't drink that much. So how do you do that? There's always something that you bring, maybe have 
Uhuma, maybe speaking, maybe some level of your dressing that can give you the originality. Uh, Do you understand? Uh, Always carry yourself because if you find yourself, that's why I said that if you fidget in the front of change, then you are rotting. You're being yourself. There's a problem with that. There's nothing wrong to say, hey guys, trust me, I can keep your money. I can trust you. I won't take the oath that you want me to take. Mm. I said, listen, I know that you want me to take an oath so that we can do deals. But trust me, in this office, I'm going to bring perfection on how the deals will be done to give us more money than where you're going. And that's where I want standard members and everyone listening to us that it's time even in this country to begin to live the ideal life because it is in compromising that we're compromising our future and the future to, of our generation, of the next generation to come. Thank you very much for being Mr. Patrick. At this point, at this juncture, without further ado, we'll delve into the adversary tool. And everyone out there, to, to just this powerful, insightful knowledge you grab from the mentor today, do well to grab a bottle of wine, a glass of wine wherever you are, as we all share. Oh, please, So um, are we are we are we are we ready to toast the wine? We believe in celebration. We believe completely that um, uh, we celebrate milestones. We celebrate um, every little opportunity because we we want to keep a memory, a bank of memory that is good, so that you know at any point in time, like David would say, the lion will kill. The bear I kill. When we face our Goliath, we'll remember the small landstone. The reason why we celebrate um, uh, our three years in here because I know people who start a journey the first year uh, they could they could survive. Second year, we are in our sitting point. We are still our growing. So we are celebrating our little landmarks so that we can consistently look back in goodness and say yes we come does this far and that's why we we thought it wise since we're not meeting here um, i'm sure when 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 the lockdown and business goes back to normal we're going to find time to celebrate and eat as usual what, what we used to eat as well so um i want if you're everywhere lift up your voice uh, lift up your glass and let's say three happy chair to stand out are you there with me So happy, happy third anniversary to all of you who have tirelessly been part of this movement, been part of this organization, been part of this mentorship. Look, whether you're on Sunday, whether you are part of us, whether you are all over the world who support us visibly and invisibly as you consistently become you and redefine the standard and find yourself and rule your world. May God bless you. May God keep you. May God promote you. May God bring you to a place of fulfillment. May God bring you to the place that you'll be celebrated. May God bring you into the place of honor. May God bring you into the place of significance. May your life consistently be redefined and to get into the right position of your dream. Thank you.
Hello there. Welcome to the medium edition of Stand Up News. My name is Omone Adeji. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Omone Adeji, the brand ambassador for Stand Out Care. Stand Out Care is a humanitarian subdivision of Stand Out with Mr. Patrick with the goal of adding values to life of those that are less fortunate around us. She kickstarted her activities last year and has so far reached out to widows and children around us here in Port Harcourt. Stand Out is three. This month's edition marks the third anniversary of Stand Out with Mr. Patrick. It has been an exciting, impactful journey with over 200 attendees every edition. Let's look at the journey so far in this report. Line with creating lasting impact, Stand Out Care flags off her first activity for the year 2020, tagged Step Up. Step Up is a lifetime impact-driven empowerment program that aims at tutoring participants in different skill sets that range from website development and design, graphics design, brand branding and customization, baking and pastries, greenhouse agriculture, Afrocentric fashion design. Welcome back. Standout Care, the humanitarian subdivision of Standout with Mr. Patrick, has flagged off as an event for this year 2020 with an empowerment program tagged Step Up. Details are more in this report coming here shortly. Fifty participants will engage in an initial four day training, after which two persons from each category will be selected to engage in a two months intensive training, which will be fully funded and equipped. Certificates will be given after each of the training sessions. At Standout with Mr. Patrick, you can follow us on our social media platforms, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. It is so I stand out. So I stand out. You can like, comment, and follow on all of this platform. You can as well visit our website on www.soistandout.com. Do well to join us on this platform. Queries, participation, sponsorship, and donations. Log on to our website and click on the standout care icon for more information. As much as we can take on this edition of Standout News. Until I come here with next edition, we need this standout. Note, it's going to be on the first come first serve basis with special interest in persons from less opportune background. Until I come your way next time, stay safe. So sorry for that break in transmission. Like I said earlier on, we'll have to keep managing the, the network we have until maybe 5G comes alive. We were about to toast. Do we all yeah, so um <laughs>
Okay, so I wanted to take more questions. Um, um, if there are questions, so I can take them um, as we are in here. Does anybody have any question? Are there questions? Are there questions? If there are questions, can I take them? If there are no questions, um, you can leave a comment and say, um, leave a comment and be part of these um, great movements. Redefine whatever situation, ask yourself, who, who, who defined me? How did I get the definition and the personality that I'm running with? So it's a time to reparent yourself. It's a time to consistently question whose life you're living. Are you living your life or living another person's life? I'm truly excited of how far God has brought me with this movement. Um, I'm, I'm getting better by the grace of God. Um, uh, 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 I, I, I want to ensure that people around me also enjoy this liberty uh, to make a choice to be who they are without fear of the opinion of people, of people's opinion. I mean, I have taken decisions before that I was so concerned about what would people say. People were definitely going to say, and that's one of the things that when you get to the point where you understand that your purpose is higher than your error, and so why you do not discount your error, but you try as much as possible to see how you engage in your error so that you can become a better you. And that's one of the things I've done. Ability to look at the habit that I did not appreciate that brought shame to me, that I was not happy about it, and see how I can engage them, accept them, and confess them, and put um, um, so a mentorship set up a um, platform that can help me become who I am. A standard is one of those platforms that consistently redefine me, define question my belief. I have a drop certain belief, I've acquired new belief, I have dropped certain association, and I'm acquiring new association. I've stopped thinking a certain uh, thinking pattern, and I've acquired another thinking pattern just to help me become that personality that I wish to leave when I drop that. Otto, you're back again, right? <laughs> yes, apologies for the break in transmission. The network yeah. has been acting up. We trust it will stay this time. Okay. So have we taken the talk? There were some questions we didn't take. Are, are you willing to take it before we get the toast? Okay, I think the questions have been taken. Okay, so why, why don't you take I the think, question I know, so that we can conclude, yeah. Okay, so I think we should take the toast. Okay. Oh. Whichever way, whether the toast or the, or the questions, I'm ready. Have the have the questions been made available? No, they have not. Okay, that's fine then. So we can take the toast. So as an African man, I'm using an African wine glass. <laughs> <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, fellow members of Standout, permit me to invite our very own mentor, Mr. Patrick Kujuma, to take the toast. <laughs> Over to you, mentor. And, and, and to all of us there, and to every young person, one of the things that I have desired is that God, if you lift me, let me be um, a sign also of an encouragement to tell people, yes, you can redefine a standard that you're not comfortable with. And that brings you into a place of liberty of choice to live your life. So from today, you know, I told you, with all the obstacles that we have turned, with all the mountains that we are climbing, with all the rivers we are swimming, with all the shame that we're overcoming, is to talk that we're going to emerge stronger 
my champions and my our standard personality in government, in industries, in every endeavor of life, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you. Congratulations. And thank you for everybody who has been part of this family. May God continue to increase you. May God continue to uphold us. May we never uh, settle in because it's not time to plateau. It is a time that it will just be gone. Thank you. Congratulations. Amen. Yeah. So, in the in the absence of questions, mm. I think we'll go straight to the introduction of the book of the month of June. Mm. And for the book of the month of June, which is highly in line with the teaching from the mentor himself, Mr. Patrick Uzuma, Originals by Adam Grant. Originals by Adam Grant. In this book, he was able to demystify the wrong notion that most people have, thinking that some, some people were were born to be superior, thinking that some people were, were cut from a different cloth, thinking that some people have some, some, some level of biological or spiritual immunity, thinking that some, some people were, were created from a special spark of imagination, thinking that some people were just made with a magic wand and they just came out more, more supreme than the other. He, he, he was able to demystify that. So in, in, in reading this book, we would understand that the only way to success is not by a special preference or some special mm -hmm. attribute given to you from creation or from birth. The only way to success, like the mentor has taught us time in, time out, persistently, consistently, is that persistence and consistency. This book will make you understand Stories of great men like Picasso. We all know Picasso, the great painter. Do you know that he made over 18,000 paintings, but he's remembered for one? Hmm. Nobody knows, nobody, nobody cares about the other thing. If he just painted one time, or two times, or three times, or 1,000 times, or 2,000 times. He made over 18,000 paintings to get that perfect one, which is remembered for. This book will also make you understand stories of people like Albert Einstein, who, who had over 258 papers, who made eight, over 858 researches, but is remembered for only two when it comes to the laws of re relativity in space. He remembered for only two. If he just wrote the first one and second one, which probably wouldn't have, which probably are not among the two he's remembered for, nobody would remember him. But he wrote first and second. If you know what it takes to write a paper, ladies and gentlemen, when you when you start doing your PhD researches to research just one paper, then you would understand what it takes to write 258. He had to go through the process of writing 258 papers to, to be remembered for two. Also, stories like that of Shakespeare. We all know Macbeth. We all know Romeo and Juliet. But he wrote hundreds of other stories that we don't remember. You would understand what distinguishes geniuses is nothing but persistence. The zeal, the will, the guts, the enthusiasm to persist against the ills and odds, to forget how to give up, and just daring you would find success. It's going to be a, a very interesting read, and obviously we'll be looking forward to the review by next month's meeting. Thank you very much. Over to you, the mentor. What do you think? Yeah, yeah, because you see, that's also emphasizing what we're saying. Be you. Learn to be you. You fell, be you. You, 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 you. There's a divorce, be you. You couldn't get a job, be you. It is in being you that the energy of you will jet propel you. So uh, it's going to be, it's such an amazing, amazing book. You know, it's, it's also going to say, keep being who you are. Be the original. You know, I, I, I'm a follower of James Allen. I just want to tell you that once you become you, you have become very resourceful. That's where your creativity comes. That's where your originality comes in. 
and all that. I really want us to the place where every one of us will find ourselves and love ourselves and be comfortable with ourselves and express ourselves everywhere we go and not alter who we are. Not not on the not undermining connections, undermining laws, but you bring yourself always in the midst of everybody so that people can identify you. It is we lose when we are copying. We lose ourselves when we copy. Don't lose yourself. Them. They may not recognize you, but like you said, persist. Stay over there. Not too long. Everybody will just say something about this person. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. If you don't remember yeah. anything from today's meeting, remember that you should just hang in there. Just stay there some little more. Because an extra mile would make you smile. Thank you very much, Ms. Alonafi. Thank you, everyone, ladies and gentlemen, for keeping a date with us today and for being through this three-year journey with us. At this point, we've come to the moment when we draw the curtain to today's edition of Stand Out with Mr. Patrick Uduma. Have a blissful week ahead and an amazing month ahead. Thank you and goodbye. And thank you very much, my viewers. Thank you, member of Stand Out, and God bless you. See you in the next edition. Thank you. My name is Omonia Adebu. Thank you so much for joining me. My name is Omonia Adebu, the brand ambassador for Stand Out Care. Stand Out Care is a humanitarian subdivision of Stand Out with Mr. Patrick, with the goal of adding value to the life of those that are less fortunate around us. She kickstarted her activities last year and has so far reached out to widows and children around us here in Kotaka. Stand Out is free. This month's edition marks the third anniversary of Stand Out with Mr. Patrick. It has been an exciting and impactful journey with over 200 attendees every day. Let's look at the journey so far in this report. Flying with creating lasting impact, Stand Out Care flags off her first activity for the year 2018, Tag Step Up. Step Up is a lifetime impact driven empowerment program that aims at tutoring participants in different skill sets that range from website development and design, graphics design, brand, branding and customization, baking and pastries, greenhouse agriculture, Afrocentric fashion design. Welcome back. Stand out here with my trans of the vision of Stand Out with Mr. Patrick has flagged up as a tag event for this week to include the empowerment program tag step up. Details are more in this report coming very shortly. Fifty participants will engage in an initial four day training after with two persons from each category will be selected to engage in a two months intensive training which will be fully funded and equipped. Certificates will be given after each of the training sessions. At Standout with Mr. Patrick, you can follow us on our social media platform on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. It is so I stand out. So I stand out. You can like, comment and follow on all of this platform. You can as well visit our website on www.soistandout.com. Do well to join us on this platform. Queries, participation, sponsorship, and donation. Log on to our website and click on the standout care icon for more information. As much as we can take on this edition of Standout, until I come to the next edition, remember this Standout. It's going to be my first conference.